Hey guys, Messy Nessie here. I've gotten a ton of questions about paint mixing, so I thought I would do a video going a little bit more in depth than my last try at showing you. I even made notes. So my preferred pouring medium of choice at the moment is Floetrol. I get it at Home Depot or Lowe's, though I will prefer Lowe's over Home Depot any day. Personal choice there. So the first kind of acrylic that we're all going to be familiar with if we're paint pourers are going to be your flow acrylics. These are a couple examples I have on hand. So this is the flow acrylic from Artist Loft. comes in these big bottles. They're $10 unless you can get them on sale or use your coupon. And here's another example is a golden flow acrylic. Now these already have flow aid mixed into them, some type of flow aid. Now, even though they're both flow acrylics, this flow acrylic is a lot thicker than this flow acrylic, though they're both fluids. They're both in the same category. But if I'm going to be using like a golden flow acrylic for a pour, I'm certainly not going to be adding as much Floetrol as I would for the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic for a paint pour. So generally these are, the golden ones are very, very expensive. So I don't see a lot of people going to be using this in general anyways. It's going to more or less be this one. It's more cost effective as far as those of us who like to pour more often. <laughs> so with these ones, I'm going to do a one-to-one -one ratio by volume. Now when I say by volume, it's by the amount. So it's going to be a cup or a gallon or a tablespoon or here's a little bathroom cup, three ounces. So it's going to be how much you have versus how much it weighs. Now if you prefer to do weight, I would measure the amount by volume, weigh them out and write your weight down. And then you would know that for X amount of ounces, per X amount of ounces, as far as your flow acrylic to your pouring medium, that you're going to get your perfect pour every time. So those are the flow acrylics. It really depends on what, how fluid the flow acrylic is, but in general for your artist law flow acrylics, I'm going to do a one to one ratio. Now, depending on what kind of fluid art you're doing, you might want to add a little water or a little bit more Floetrol to get it to the thinner, thinner consistency. If you want your colors to have a little bit more blend to them versus having like straight lines like when you're doing a ring pour. Now, the next type of acrylics is going to be your tube acrylics. So I have three examples here for you. These, I think, are the three biggest ones. Your Artist Loft Tube, your Liquitec Basic Tube, and your Master's Touch Tube. These guys, I'm going to do a one-part paint to two parts of your Floetrol. So with these guys, they're just a little bit thicker than your Flow Acrylic, your Acrylic Flow from Artist Loft. These are going to be your everyday t paints that you use for your general painting. Um, the next type of acrylic I would call your heavy body acrylic. So there's these guys. I use these more or less in my fine arts when I have my brushes and a palette out and I'm trying to paint something very specific. And then I found these guys recently. I don't know how long they've been around or anything. But it's literally just a huge jar of super thick acrylic paint. And when I say thick, I mean like, here's my workspace. The jar is upside down. And now it's back right side up. And nothing in there changed. I literally have to use a rubber scraper to get everything out of this jar. This is your heavy body paint. Now for your heavy body paint, I'm going to do one part of this paint to about three or so parts of the Floetrol. Now your brand is going to be the deciding factor in your recipe for when you do your pouring. 
which one's thicker, how's it going to mix, what's going to work right. You don't know until you give it a try. But in general, your rule of thumb is going to be about one part of your heavy body flow, I mean, your, I'm sorry, your heavy body acrylics to your three parts of Floetrol. Now the next category I group paints in is going to be your craft type paints or other. So your craft type paints are going to be like these guys. So we have your little apple barrels. You can usually get these little jars for 50 cents or a dollar. Now these ones are not going to dry as nice, I would say, as your everyday tube acrylics. But sometimes if you're on a budget, you're going to make it work because you're going to put something glossy on top at the end anyway. So it really doesn't matter what it looks like as long as the color is what you need. So these are your apple barrel craft paints. We have some surface paint. I got it on sale. It's a big bottle of blue. Sometimes that's all you need. You're like, I need blue and this is on sale. We're going to try it out. This is the Deco Art. You can get these big bottles usually for about $8 unless of course you find them on clearance. And then Folk Art. Now Folk Art has a bunch of paints that are in this size tube, but you can also get them in this slightly larger bottle. And this is the Color Shift. And then another paint I consistently use are the Americana Decor Metallics by Deco Art. And these are gorgeous. Now, these ones, I don't have like a rule of thumb recipe. Some paints are going to be thicker. This paint right here is going to be thicker than this paint. So I'm just going to basically get a bottle. I usually have them started already for the colors I use most often. And I pour some paint in there. I shake it up with what's in there. And then I'll add a little flow trawl until the consistency feels right. So those are the different types of paints I've got going on. So we've got our flow acrylics. And then we have our tube paints. We have our heavy body paints. And we have our tube acrylics. Now at our everyday craft stores, we're going to generally find our tubes on sale all of the time whether it's at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Now, I have access to an AC Moore, but it's about an hour away, and I have access to one other craft store, but again, it's an hour away. It's in a town about an hour from here. So hopefully I'll get my hands on some of their paints soon so I can include those in my tutorials, but for now, I have access to Hobby Lobby and Michael's, <laughs> and of course, Amazon. So we're going to do an example here of the Artist Loft. This is the Phthalo Blue. I don't have a bottle started for that one yet. So we're going to do by volume. And this is literally what I mean by volume. We're going to squirt in. Oof, no one likes that sound. Some blue. And however much paint I can manage to muster out of this bottle is pretty much the same amount of paint that I'm sorry, the same amount of Floetrol that I'm going to use. So I'm going to pause it, I'm going to get the paint in this cup, Floetrol in this cup, and then I'll bring you back for the mixing part. Alright, so we've got, by volume, pretty much the same amount of paint versus Floetrol. And I did a last minute bottle change. These are the two for a dollar squeezers at the Dollar Tree. This is how the ring comes. All I do is literally snip it off. This part is trash. And then I have the little cap left over for the tip. So I like to get this in there. All right, so we've got one part to one part right here. Oh, okay, I didn't really think this part out, did I? I'm more of an eyeballer, but I know a lot of people are very specific about the measurements as far as their recipe goes. So I am trying my best here. Ooh. 
Okay. Almost got it all out of this little cup. Boom. All right. Let's throw these away. And we're going to add the cap. And mix it up. Okay, I'm going to pause for the mixing part. And we are back. I have a cup that way I can squeeze some of this out into the cup and you can see that there's there's a little flow troll on the top from mixing but in general there's the fluidity of a one-to-one -one. see it covers the surface really well And if you want it a little thinner, you just add a bit more flow troll. It really depends on the type of fluid art that you're doing. But when I'm doing my ring pours or I am doing my cups, for example, these are different painted cups that I make. When I do ones like this or like this. This one's still a work in progress. Um, and I had one more example to show you. These. Whenever I'm doing these types of cups, this is the consistency I'm using. This is the recipe for the paint. The Floetrol versus the acrylic, the type of acrylic. And then um, I do this type of mixture for my ring pours as well. Though if I'm doing a pour that requires some more fluidity, like a Dutch pour, for example, I'm going to have a little bit more flow troll in the bottle because I need the paint to be a little more movable. So I hope that this video answers your questions. I hope that the demonstration works for your um, visual needs please comment any more questions if there's anything else I can answer I want you guys to be able to create the art that you want to create and I hope that my tutorials show you how I do it so that you can learn from those and learn from my mistakes and create the things that you want to make so thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out how I mix paint and I hope to see you again soon thank you